Hello, everyone, and welcome to Baker Boyer's semi-annual business panel. I'm Mario Delgadillo, Regional Business Banking Manager. This is our first panel of 2022, and today we have an excellent group of speakers for you. Uh, we're thankful to be joined by Doug Simcock, owner of Windermere Walla Walla, Todd Wright, Windermere broker out of Walla Walla. Uh, we also have the pleasure of being joined today by Dr. Patrick Jones, PhD, Executive Director of the Institute of Public Policy and Economic Analysis. But before we begin our panel, our very own business advisor, Ashley Mahan, will share the results from our latest business climate survey. Uh, thank you to everyone who had the opportunity to participate in the survey. And for those that didn't have a chance this time around, uh, we'd love to hear from you. We believe you'll find the results insightful and helpful with your future business planning efforts. Uh, once again, thank you so much, and I'll turn it over to Ashley Mahan to begin. Hello, and welcome to the second annual Business Climate Survey presentation. My name is Ashley Mahan, and I'm a business advisor here on our commercial lending team in Walla Walla. Today, I'm going to share the results of our 2022 Business Climate Survey. The intention of this video is to provide you with a brief presentation of the survey results, including commentary provided by survey respondents. Our goal is to conduct these surveys annually to get a sense for how our commu business communities are navigating the current business climate and how they are positioning themselves for the future. As we go through the slides today, please keep in mind that this is our second survey and we've made some tweaks to the survey from last year, so we're not quite ready to provide comparative data or trend analysis, but we had a decent participation rate and I'm excited to share some high level results. With that said, let's dive in. First, let's get an understanding of the makeup of survey responders. Then we'll review each survey question along with the responses and we'll conclude with high level results. I have three slides for you to get an understanding of who took the survey. So please keep this information in the back of your mind as you think about the survey results. Here we can see that we had good representation of participants through all four of Baker Boyer's markets with Walla Walla and Yakima uh, making up the most of the audience. Yes, these percentages add up to more than 100 because some of the businesses check that they operate in more than one location. FTE counts within these businesses show that 65% of respondents have 20 or fewer full-time equivalent employees. As with last year's survey participants, the majority of the businesses responding are mature in age. Um, I was happy to see that we've had a broad range of gross annual rev revenue figures represented as well. Lastly, here we can see that there is good diversity across industries. Within the other category, there were a couple of wineries, a brewery, a government entity, and a real estate servicing business. So to recap, as a whole, survey participants are mostly from Walla Walla and Yakima. They're small with 20 or fewer full-time equivalent employees, but established having been in business for over 10 years, and they're diverse in terms of average annual gross revenue and industries. So now that we have an idea for who answered the survey, let's go through each of the 12 questions. First question is asking about expectations in 2022. As we can see here, this year's expectations are that gross revenues will increase, profit margins will remain the same or decline, and we can expect to see some businesses invest in capital projects while employee turnover is expected to maintain the course. Employee turnover is expected to be consistent with last year. There were a couple comments surrounding the use of technology to solve some employment needs, such as hiring contractors and virtual assistants, and also turning to robotics to reduce reliance on the workforce. For those expecting a rise in gross revenues, we collected comments about businesses forecasting increased sales volume and businesses and industries who have benefited from increased demand during the pandemic and expect it to continue into 2022. Many of uh, those who are expecting a decline in profit margins cited increasing cost of payroll. The trend from all the comments showed that higher cost of goods sold and wages are creating a need to increase prices, which is in turn expected to help increase gross revenue, which is resulting in the consistent profit margins expectation. Question two att um, attempts to further understand those capital spending projects anticipated this year. 23% of respondents are not planning on increasing capital spending, 
but from those who are, the majority of them will be purchasing equipment. Companies within the restaurants, bars, or alcohol production industries commonly reported multiple areas for capital investments within equipment, facility improvement or expansion, and furnitures and fixtures. Over half of the survey respondents agree that most, the most important factors to their profit outlook in the next year are cost of goods, sales, the economy, um, and employee pay and benefits. Next question four looks at the drivers of revenue during 2021. 76% of companies reported that the pandemic affected their revenue last year. 44% of those said COVID has been the cause for lack of revenue growth, while 32% said that COVID has contributed to revenue growth. Those citing COVID as a contributor to revenue growth were primarily within the construction, finance, or insurance industries, and then also within retail and restaurant or alcohol industries cited COVID as a driver of revenue growth, which I'm guessing could be correlated um, with a strong tourism last year. For question five, when asked to rank these items in order of greatest impact on improving productivity and efficiency going forward, 26% of these participants agreed that the supply chain is the number one most important. But as you can see here, that there wasn't a significant consensus among the survey respondents. So I looked to see if there was alignment within industries, but the rankings were quite varied. So I think a good takeaway here is to remember that your business is unique. Maybe your competitor is focused on innovating while your biggest priority is reorganizing management to ensure the company is set up for the future. Question six, when asked about profitability in 2021, we see that most said it grew. Of the 66% of survey respondents reporting profit profitability growth last year, Keep in mind that 91% of them have also been in business for over 10 years. And from question four earlier, we know that the reasons were mostly attributed to increased demand. Within these responses, delays in the supply chain and cost of goods were cited among the most common reasons for a flat or declining profit margin last year. When comparing 2021 results with 2021 expectations, 23% of the participant in last year's business climate said that they expected profit margins to increase. Bearing in mind that the survey participants are not the exact same people year over year, um, generally speaking, expectations did not match reality. Profitability grew last year when most thought otherwise. Question seven intended to dig deeper into business plans for 2022. Clearly, businesses are expected to make changes to their prices. Comments from participants overwhelmingly noted their price increases will mirror the increases in their raw materials and employee compensation, which matches national trends. Comments about changes in business strategies and business investments noted expansion of facilities or services or changing product offerings. Some people mentioned investing and implementing technologies to increase sales or improve efficiency. And as noted within the commentary mentioned on the last slide, here on question eight, we can see which boxes were checked for the most common drivers of price changes, which you're probably not too surprised by. So next, coming off of a few slides about increased ex expenses and expectations of price increases, it's great to see here that businesses are feeling pretty optimistic about 2022, with five being highly optimistic here. And with the next slide, we'll see they expect revenues to maintain the course or grow. So here, look, optimism is alive and well. Capacity and momentum were some of the main commentary themes here. Some quotes included phrases such as, our capacity will be much greater, more inventory for more sales, we're securing additional volume, and this is my third year in business and we're gaining momentum, and also, we have plenty of work lined up, but I'm worried that we could have some kind of slowdown. So a little caution there with the optimism. All right, second to last question. Question 11 asks about pressures businesses are facing within non-wage compensation, economic policies impacting their decisions, compensation pressure for new hires, for skilled workers, and lastly, wage compensation pressure overall. 
dark blue represents yes to the pressure, showing pressure in most of these categories, with the largest agreement being compensation pressure for skilled workers. To give some examples from the survey comments, one participant said, keeping our skilled workers paid relative to new hires has been a struggle. Another pointed out that a shrinking labor pool and inflation are forcing higher pay. And now we're at the last question from the survey. The second and last bars on this slide relate to price trends and hiring activity, which we've covered in pretty good detail already. Comments associated with these questions are consistent with earlier remarks. Yes, price increases are planned to match the increased cost of materials, payroll, etc. Now the first bar on here says, are terms and availability of credit influencing capital spending plans for your business or the businesses you are familiar with? Um, overwhelming response is no, meaning that business financing is not causing issues for capital spending plans. Some say financing has been reasonable to obtain, others say that their cash flow from their operations has been sufficient to cover capital spending projects. On the other hand, shown in the third bar, when asked if there are any recent changes that might affect capital spending activity, many participants noted um, issues within the supply chain and inability to find equipment. So while survey respondents noted earlier that they plan for equipment purchases in 2022, many of which are also reporting that they're having a hard time accessing these desired purchases. So if that sounds like you, know that you're not alone. And to wrap this up, here are some quick key observations. So employees, many are having difficulty finding skilled workers and those workers are demanding higher pay. Overall compensation um, increases are taking place this year if they haven't already. And I think it's interesting to note that a few of the survey participants shared that they will, will be looking to technology to reduce the reliance on the shrinking and more expensive labor pool. Next, inflationary pressures, demand, rising costs of goods sold, and increased compensation are putting upward pressure on businesses to increase prices in order to maintain profit margins. And lastly, optimism and growth are very much expected in 2022. 89% of survey participants expect sales or revenues to remain stable or accelerate compared to 2021. And 83% are planning for capital investments to continue at the current pace or to increase them. Equipment will be the primary category of asset investment if the supply chain can support the demand. This concludes our business climate survey presentation. We will distribute these slides to everyone who provided their information when completing the survey and we'll have it available on our website soon. I want to extend a big thank you for those of you who participated in the survey Please look for this survey in the future and we can continue to learn from each other. Thank you. Doug Simcock here with Windermere Real Estate and I'm here with Todd Wright, also with Windermere. Yeah. Uh, does a lot of commercial real estate for us here uh, and in the Valley. And so let's just get right into what we're gonna be talking about today. Uh, and uh, Rob helped us set up a little agenda here. So we're gonna talk about what we see happening in the Wall Wall Commercial market. I'm going to talk about lease rates, uh, what he sees happening with cap rates, um, a little bit about what's hot, and uh, any changes uh, that uh, he's seen uh, due to COVID. All right, so let's let's just dive right in and let's talk about lease rates. Uh, well, basically what we're seeing in the Walla Walla market is uh, newer construction in the hotter areas is ranging between 18 and $23 a square foot. Um, as construction costs go up, that may change. Now, these are per square foot per year numbers, um, and these are also plus triple net. Um, there's other leases out there, but uh, this is kind of the gold standard. Um, for existing buildings, it's a little lower. Uh, it's about $12 to $16 a square foot, depending on location. You know, there's a lot of things that it depends on that range. But uh, uh, our highest activity and highest lease rates are definitely in the downtown core. Um, these obviously, you know, lease rates are affected by, you know, retail anchors, visibility, access, um, pedestrian, auto traffic, uh, these kinds of things. That's why our ranges are so big. Um, but uh, main floor, that's all for retail. Main floor office space tends to track retail fairly closely. 
Um, upper floor office space is a little uh, is generating a little less than than the main floors uh, and the retail spaces, um, and industrial and warehouse space is is uh, is considerably lower than both retail and office. All right, um, so that's kind of the income buildings are generating from leases. Um, and so we're going to talk about cap rates. Now, Rob said we need to do a little like cap rate 101. I think that's because Rob doesn't fully understand cap rates. <laughs> so uh, but I know there's a lot of sophisticated uh, investors uh, uh, on the call, uh, but you know, some of you haven't invested in commercial real estate. So cap rate uh, is just when you're talking about buildings, commercial buildings, it's the net operating income divided by the purchase price gives you the cap rate. So the little example here is if you're wondering, you know, what would a seven and a half cap be? Well, on a million dollar building, if it had $75,000 a year in, in net operating income, uh, that would be a seven and a half cap rate. All right, so we threw that in. Uh, now that Rob knows what they are, Todd, um, uh, what do you see? being a little hard on Rob. <laughs> <laughs> what do you see happening uh, in Walla Walla as far as cap rates? Uh... Well, um, asking caps are all over the place. Um, I'm seeing them as low as 4% and as high as 10%. Um, what I'm seeing on completed deals though are is six plus, um, and I would say even maybe six and a half and up. Um, the deals that we see that are under that typically have some outside influences, uh, either an exceptional tenant or some added value um, with you know an owner that wants to move uh, part of his office is there, you know, it's some um, ulterior uh, plans from the person buying is when we see those lower, lower than four, lower than 6% cap rates. Um, uh, and those lower rates are always going to, you know, be involved in, in very desirable tenants and, and other plans. All right. So cool. So uh, real quick, uh, what's hot? What's in the most demand? Uh, well, historically and continually, uh, downtown Walla Walla is is the hub of our uh, commercial activity. It is the hot spot, and it radiates out from there. We do have a few, um, you know, retail centers around town as well that are 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 decently hot. Uh, not as hot as the downtown, but uh, um, you know, anywhere there's people and consumers, there's those are hot spots. Um, size wise, the hot, the hottest, uh, size, you know, category is the small space 500 to a thousand square foot is in high demand. They're not easy to find. Um, but there's a lot of users out there. So, um, the other hot thing that we're seeing in Walla Walla right now is investments in multi-unit residential places, um, either converting hotels or putting up, a, a very, uh, uh, high unit numbers, uh, uh, apartment complexes is hot right now as well. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, like the large one that's now completed next to Safeway downtown, 120 units, there's that and more out on the Kmart site. And if you see there's a hotel on Main Street, one off second that you'll see a fence around, uh, those have been purchased by an investor and our understanding, so converting them from hotel to apartments. Uh, but there seems to be a lot of yep. a lot of uh, investment and we need in multifamily residential multi units right now, so that's a that's a good thing. Yep. Okay. So what impact, Todd, uh, has COVID had? <laughs> that's still evolving. That's the short answer. Um, early on, uh, the you know the head to home, stay at home, and work from home impact. Uh, there was kind of a romance with that. Businesses were liking it. Um, employees were liking it. Um, but what we're seeing is that's kind of morphed into a need to connect with coworkers and a need for separation from home and office. <laughs> right. So, Turns out maybe we're not all as focused as we thought in yeah. our bathrobe, sitting and on our sofa at home, right? So it's <clears throat> it's developing. Um, it'll be interesting to see how it shakes out in the end. Um, we still may see some uh, large square footage users reduce their space. We may not. We may, uh, people still wanting that experience the to connect with other people, um, it may, it may end up being a non-issue. So it's the, the short answer is it's still evolving. We're going to have to see, wait and see what, how, how it all works out. Well, and that sets up kind of that last one, uh, people want the experience, right? Yes. So having that retail experience, uh, to sit down and, and taste wine, of course, is enjoyable, um, going out to eat, uh, turns out people miss that. And, 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 uh, I think that's what we're seeing right now is, is that 
the those spaces, missing connections, those spaces say, connections. Yep. Well, we've just barely scratched the surface of commercial real estate in Walla Walla, but that's just a quick update uh, given our time. Uh, feel free to contact either Todd or myself. Uh, and as you can see, uh, Todd Wright at windermere.com. Uh, Happy he's, to answer he's your go to guy. Or yep. uh, clarify anything you need. Yep. And thanks for your time today. Um, uh, have, a, have, a, have a great rest of your day. Hello, everyone. This is Patrick Jones at Eastern Washington University's Institute for Public Policy and Economics. And I'm going to share with you a few insights today from the website that our shop has uh, maintained for many years called Walla Walla Trends. So uh, we'll look at those drivers of the local economy from recent history and then looking forward. So the first indicator I would like to take a peek at is one that really drives the or defines the overall potential of uh, local economy, and that's population. So let's take a dive into population on the Walla Walla Trend site and uh, see what the graphs are telling us. And it, what it says, first of all, is that the population of 2021 was uh, 62,100, which actually Represent, represents a drop from the prior year. Uh, surprisingly, that is due to the um, absence of students at both your colleges and universities uh, due to the pandemic. The overall growth um, between this particular year, 2021, and going back a decade it, uh, is about um, 300 souls in the county. So not a, a big number, uh, and in terms of a growth rate, that puts Walla Walla County at a growth rate per year at 0.6%. This is really low compared to benchmarks that we might want to pull out, in particular the state of Washington, which grew at, over the same period at 1.5%, and uh, the state of Was and uh, the United States, which grew just a little faster. So the forecast that we have, the one forecast we have available to us about Walla Walla is from 2017. It'll be updated here in a few months. But that forecast basically said between now, 2021 or 2022, and the end of the decade, Walla Walla should grow by, by about 2,500 people. So not a, a terrifically fast growth rate, but uh, there is some growth in the community. Now, I'd like to look at wages because wages really determines income. So we can go over to the economic vitality page and click under income and then look at the overall annual wage. And for those of you who have been on the site before, you know that green is for the, the state and uh, wine red is for the county of Walla Walla. And between these two years, 2020 and 2019, there was a substantial increase of close to 5% per year. Uh, the, the trend over the last 10 years has been about 3.1%. So uh, 2020 was, uh, from a wage perspective, certainly a uh, above trend kind of year, something good to see. And we have two quarters worth of data right now for 2021, it's my guess that we'll be somewhat between 5% and 3%, in other words, the trend and what happened in 2020, so let's call it 4%. And then looking forward to this year that we're just starting, uh, we think uh, it will be in the three to three and a half percent range. So modest growth, and if you put those in inflation adjusted terms, uh, actually, uh, not too positive from uh, what we call a real wage perspective. So wages then help determine income, and let's look at income. We're gonna look at a value called, a measure called per capita personal income. And we're gonna look at, again, two red lines for the Walla Walla County, and, and just consider the upper one because this strips out the population at the penitentiary. Most communities don't have a penitentiary or an inmate population the size of Walla Walla. So to be fair, we thought it would be good to 
do it without that population. And if we look at this particular movement between 2019 and 2020, uh, you can see a pretty rapid increase uh, just by the slope of the line. And that represented over 9% between the two years, which is far above the trend over the past decade, which was 4%. So 9.3% versus 4%. Wages helped here, as we saw, wages went up about 5%. But what really drove this particular increase was the size of the flows from Washington, D.C., from our federal transfer payments. And transfer payments are things like Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid. And importantly, in 2020, uh, extended unemployment benefits. So in 2021, we won't know for several more months just where that is, what the, what the, uh, what the level will be. But it's my guess that we're going to be between what has been trend and what happened in 2020. So I'm going to put that, peg that about 5%. And then going forward for this particular year, I think we'll be looking at a much lower rate of increase in part because we've had two years of very strong increases and in part because the state forecast is quite low. Uh, the state is forecasting only a 2% growth in personal income. So I think that Walla Walla is not going to be a whole lot different. So I would be careful in planning on the kind of increases we've seen here uh, recently for the current year we're in. Then I'd like to look at employment and uh, employment along with income really drives spending and we'll end up with looking at spending. So let's look at total employment. And you can see that in 2020, there was a decline between 2019 and 2020. That decline was not huge. It was about 800 workers, and the unemployment rate obviously went up from the prior year. That's what this particular line is. And I just wanted to report that uh, look, looking at monthly data, which hasn't been completely vetted and hasn't been adjusted uh, for seasonality, we can say that 2021 had a record of uh employment being greater than 2019 employment for every month. So once we, if we're to go off and see the 2021 bar uh, in a few months, you'll find that it's substantially higher, not only higher than 2020, but higher than the pre-pandemic levels we saw. So in the labor market, uh, it's safe to say there's been a recovery. So all this then leads to a look at uh, retail sales, which drives so many different things in uh, a local economy, especially in the state of Washington uh, with our tax structure. And I just want to point out that 2020, uh, despite the pandemic, despite the loss of uh, employ the number of people who lost their jobs, that retail sales went up considerably uh, from 2019 levels. So here we have 1.1 billion going up to 1.2 billion. So over $100 million, roughly speaking, increased. And that, as you can look on these growth rate lines, was really an anomaly to the state. Uh, Walla Walla grew 8 point something percent there, 8.3, whereas the state as a whole actually declined its retail sales growth. So uh, I think it's safe to say that in 2020, despite all the hardship that certain industries endured in Walla Walla County, that uh, the uh, economy largely escaped the full wrath of the downturn. And as we look at 2021, I think a lot of those, a lot of that good trend in uh, that we saw in 2020 continued. And in 2021, I, I certainly think that barring some natural disaster or outbreak of war, that we will see uh, positive changes. However, uh, I don't think those changes will be quite as large as you've experienced in the last two years. So that is 
the Walla Walla economy uh, look back and uh, brief look into the future once over lightly.